Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I'm going to bring this message from a whole other angle. And I pray and hope that it'll be a brand new revelation to you. As I was studying and reading verse by verse, dissecting every verse, I started realizing like, man, you know what? Jesus spoke of faith in various ways. And so uh, I promise you, if you really have ears to hear and eyes to see and a heart to receive, you're going to walk out of here today with a new perspective on faith. Are we, guys, are, are we ready for that? Awesome. Reality is this, is that God says that he is, he is a God that will not be mocked. And he says, and whatever man sows, that he will also do what? Reap. And so, and so God has intentionally started us with the greatest investment. And it's called faith. And the reason that he placed a seed of faith in us was because, like our father, he always wants to set us up for success. That's the way God is. He always wants his kids to be successful in life. But the key to our success in life, the key for our um, spirit of overcoming life is faith. Without faith, number one, it's impossible to please God. I mean, think about it. If you truly want to please God... There's not enough works that you can do that can please them. The only thing scripturally that says that you can please God is by faith. Like if you really want to please God, you grow in faith. Now, it also says, and he who comes to God must believe that he's God. So if I am going to believe that he is God, I have to start learning how to live this life of faith. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit more today. Now, I did uh, correct myself. And I, that's what I love about God. I, I think as you start hopefully maturing in God, you start learning new things. You start seeing life a little bit different. Um, and sometimes, you know what, we, because we're creatures of, 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 of learning, sometimes we learn things that, you know, are not necessarily, uh, you know what, theologically correct. But sometimes they're just ideologies. And, uh, and nothing wrong with ideas, but you know what? I think that sometimes we can come up with our own little theory or theology that maybe not be the greatest. For example, I used to think, okay, I'm going to tell on myself so that you guys can learn how to tell on yourself too. Um, I, I would be the person that would say, you know what? Um, why don't you believe God for something greater than a parking space? Have you guys ever heard talk, people talk like, yeah, I pray for my parking space, praise God. And I, every time I pray for my parking space, I get my parking space. And so I would kind of be annoyed when I would hear stuff like that. I'm like, dang, why don't you just start believing for healing? You know, and, 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 but, but you know what? I, I started as I'm studying this, I'm like, you know what? I was wrong for that. You know why? Because here's the truth. There is different measures of faith in every person. There are different levels of faith in every person. And so if, if I have to start Today, if I were someone new in the faith, believing for a parking space, well, praise God, at least I'm believing for something in God, right? Like God provide for that parking space. And so I started thinking, okay, then from parking spaces, I can move up maybe to the next thing. Maybe I can start believing for a job. And then maybe from I can start believing God for, and so forth. And so we, we, we start learning how to develop this thing called faith. But I'm going to bring you a whole other angle today, and I want you to listen Look at your neighbor and say, pay attention. You guys are so soft-spoken. Say, just pay attention. Yeah. yeah. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. In, in 2 Corinthians 4, in verse 17 through 18, it says this. Because here, once again, faith is the foundation for our life. He says, for our light. And I love this. You know what? When, 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 when the Bible, the Bible is, is, is always good news. In the midst of bad news. So check this out. It says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us. And that's pretty amazing how, how, how the apostle Paul can say that, that our, our momentary troubles are achieving something. Like how is that even possible? But check this out. Faith will always interpret your circumstance different than how you see it. Faith is an interpreter. 
Faith interprets things that right now may not seem that great. The things that you see with your natural eye right now that are not happening, that are not taking place. Faith starts seeing it a little bit different. Faith starts interpreting it and says, no, no, no. See, you're looking at this whole thing wrong. And so that's what Paul's saying. Hey, listen. This is my faith. My faith is interpreting our situation of troubles. He says they're really achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all, outweighs every single trouble that you're experiencing right now. He says, you know what? The kind of faith that we live, this is nothing, man. This is small potatoes. This is, this is, this is cereal for breakfast. This is nothing. This is Lucky Charms. Favorite cereal, by the way. Verse 18. So we fix... Our eyes not. Isn't that pretty cool? I mean, I, when, when you start with a se sentence like, so we fix our eyes on what we really want. And so we fix our eyes on what we really need. He says, no. And so we fix our eyes not. Not. How many of us fix our eyes on so many things, but God says, not we fix our eyes not on what is seen, he says, but on what is unseen since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And so faith is simply this. Faith is being able to see things from a God perspective. You begin to see those things that are not visible. Things that you can't see happening right now. And then faith begins to not only interpret that in this situation, my God is greater, my God is bigger. And I know that by faith I can start seeing those things that I'm believing for and bringing them from the unseen world into the seen. Now I see. And so I, I, I love this because whatever you're going through, and I love this, aren't you glad that our troubles are temporary? Yeah, they're not forever, but, but, but check this out. But they could be long-term if you do not learn how to manage, steward your faith. Because your faith is the only thing that can weather the storms of life. That's it. Nothing else. It's faith. It's the foundation for everything. But here's a point for you if you're a note-taker, okay. So what happens is that so many of us go through life by what we see. And so it's almost like that whole idea of like, well, God... God tells us to do something. He says, okay, God, show me and I'll believe. God says, no, believe and then I'll show you. But so many of us, we just go through life. We're just going and we're going through life by what we see. But here's the problem. But God wants us to grow through life by what we hear. By what we hear. Everybody say hear. God wants us to grow. How do I know that God wants us to grow? Everybody say grow. grow. So the starting point of growing is hearing. Why? Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. So, so if we're going to grow, we have to learn how to develop ears to hear. If you just take the scriptures, just let's take the book of Revelations. All throughout every single chapter, the, the, the Holy Spirit is speaking. He says, and, and let him who has, has ears hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And so I know that in, in this room right now, you can all see me. And so people come here or any other church and they see the speakers and they're watching us and they're hearing us and everything. But check this out. You may be seeing me, but you may not be hearing him. And how many times has that happened where you ask the person, hey, so what you, would you learn on Sunday? Jesus. Okay, how about beyond Jesus? <laughs> you know, like what was the message? Yeah, be nice. Be good. And so, so there's, there's this sense of like we're so visual, right, that we've, we've turned off the hearing aid, which is the Holy Spirit. And so how do we get the frequency of God back? Because God's saying, hey, listen, I'm speaking, but you're not listening. How many of us, we go through life and there's no change. Actually, you keep defaulting to who you used to be instead of being transformed into the new person God desires you to be. And there's no change. Why? Because we're just going through life by what we see. When I see it, I believe him. When I see it, I believe him. God says, no, believe me, and then you'll start seeing. Believe me, and then you'll start seeing. Believe me, and then you'll start seeing. Start hearing me, and then you'll start believing 
Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So God wants us to grow in the stewardship of our faith. How do I know that? Let's go to the next verse. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says this. For we live. Everybody say we live. Okay, so this is talking about how you live. This is talking about how I live. Okay, so he's saying for we, we, the church, we live. We live by faith. In other words, this is, I'm shacking up with faith. Me and faith, we're in it. We're intimate. Faith and I, we hang out together. Faith and I, we do life together. And so that's where I got rocked a little bit because if the scripture says, for we live by faith and not by what? Okay, so then I started thinking, okay, Mauricio, so there really is nothing wrong with believing God for a parking space because God cares about every single detail of our life because he wouldn't tell us and the just shall live by faith, but then we can't believe for the small things. So it just kind of rocked my world and he confronted me and I started thinking, okay, well, praise God that we can start with parking faith, but at some point we have to develop the faith and start believing for other things. And so he cares so much about us. He cares so much about the details of, uh, of our life that he even knows the number of hairs that are on our head. And every day that we comb our hair and a hair falls off, he deducts it and he says, okay, sh -sh -sh, okay, new, new, new number, new amount. And, and it's amazing because God is so awesome like that, that he cares even about your hair. Isn't that cool? That he cares about the number of hairs on your head. But God wants us to, to live by faith so that we can start applying the faith for everything we do in life. Listen, I think so many times the only time that we use faith or that we exercise faith is when we're in trouble. But God's saying, no, I want you to exercise your faith when all things are well. Because in order for you to please me, you just got to live by faith. Like what if we just started saying things like this, like, you know, and Felicia can attest to this. Like wherever you go, you know it's going to be like blessed. Like what if you were the kind of person that said, you know what, boss? <laughs> the only reason this place is successful is because I'm here. <laughs> like we're blessed because I'm here. You know why we're not going down? Because I am here. I mean, think about it. If you are a person who lives by faith, there shouldn't be a down economy where you work. Let's be honest. Let, let me use the example. And Pete Feli was there. We, were, we, were, we went to a restaurant and it was dead. You walked in, remember how dead it was? Like, we were like the only ones, we're like, you know, like a whole gang walking in. And they're all mopping. And we're like, dang, they've got really nothing to do. I mean, it used to be a restaurant. And, and, I, and, I, and we met the lady who was like sweeping and she was the owner actually. And we're like, hey, what's going on? She's like, no, it's very slow and nothing's happening. And I, so I said, that's going to that's gonna change right now. I said, this place is going to be busy right now real soon. We're going to throw a party. It's going to be awesome. And let me tell you something. Of course, she's like, eh. And so at that point, you better, I'm like, man, this place better be packed soon. Like something better change up in this place, right? Because I just thought, I'm like, you watch, man, God's going to bless you. It's going to be, I'm going to rock this place. It's gonna be. And so it's like, you better deliver, God. <laughs> but don't you know that when you operate in faith, the pressure is not on you. The pressure is on your God who demands you to live by faith. God's just like, I'm just looking for someone who's crazy enough to believe me. And guess what? How packed did that place get when we were, when, as we, that place got packed. And, of course, you know, they probably like, hey, can you guys stay here? No, we're leaving now. <laughs> we're leaving. Yeah, and that's the way, that's the, but what if we started living like that? Like you can actually, you know what, pray for your business and say, there is no down economy where I work because I'm here. I'm here. The reason that this business is blessed. Listen, I used to work for a corporation and the owners would tell me, Mauricio, you know what? I know that we have the lowest shrink because you're here. Well, yeah, because I have a big God. That's a different way of thinking. That's living by faith. Look at your number and say, you got to start doing it. Such a quiet 12 o'clock. And here's why, guys. You know what, we live, we live in a, in, a, in a country right now, the times we live in, it is so negative. I mean, I don't remember, now, now I watch news every day. I don't remember a time 
We have to turn on the TV every single day, and there's some kind of drama in the government. Like there's always something. And today, and it's like da-da-da-da-da. And it can be so negative that it's just so much bad news. But if you're not careful, guys, if you're listening constantly to all this news in the media, what begins to happen is we begin to feed on the fear frenzy that, that is thrown out there. And if you don't have the faith to sustain you when all these troubles come, then you start getting sucked into the stuff. And then you start feeling like this sense of like, man, I'm just being completely drowned out. I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling oppressed. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling hopeless. In 2000 2008 through 2010, we know that we hit the greatest recession, right? It was almost like the Great Depression, was they were saying, right? But, but it, it was amazing as you did the studies and realized that how many people were affected, not only by the economy, but spiritually, emotionally, people were completely just taken down because the news just kept feeding the world that we're going down and it's going to be worse. And it's just like bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news. I did the study and I found out that during 2008 through 2010, within two years, 10,000 people committed suicide that was linked to the economy. We, there was husbands and wives uh, 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 creating this massive martyr of their children. I mean, just crazy stuff. And you see, this is what happens when, when God says, I want you to live by faith because my economy is different than the world's economy. You know what? We have to have ears. Everybody say ears. Come on, we got to have ears to hear what God is saying. We have to start being like this, like, okay, God, what are you saying? Because when the news, when the world is bringing you all kinds of depressive stories, you have to go back and say, you know what, in faith, you have to say, you know what, the news that I get is from a different source. And he is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And he says, everything is going to be all right if I just put my trust in him. But you got to have ears to hear. But we're having such a weak, weak frequency. Of connecting with God's voice. Just don't hear that no more. Look at what Jesus says. <laughs> go with me to. Uh, go to Mark chapter 4 verse 24. This is really good. Mark 4 24. Listen. He, here's why we have to be careful. You, you, you cannot let what you see. Hinder what God needs you to hear. You can't. And, and how many of us have made wrong decisions based on what we see instead of based on what we heard? All of a sudden, something's not going right. So then you start making a decision based on fear and not a decision based on faith. And so what hinders that? The wrong voices. There are so many voices that you and I listen to every single day. I mean, see, here's the problem. How do you interpret? Because right now we're going we're gonna to hear what Jesus says. And before I read it, well, what the heck? He says, then he said to them, take heed. Everybody say, take heed. Take heed. What you what? Yeah. In other words, be careful who you're listening to. Be a steward of what you hear. Because if you don't steward what you're hearing, and not everything you're hearing is great, then what happens is the enemy comes in, and then he begins to start the, the deception process of lying to you. Because Jesus, out of his own mouth in Mark 4, he said, take heed. Hey, listen, steward what you're hearing. You know what? I don't mind listening to many voices because I've learned how to filter them. Right? And so, but we also have to decide, okay, how do I start deciphering my voice and God's voice? Because many times we make decisions based on God said, no, it was you said. Because they didn't line up with anything with what God said. Right? No, it's you said. Stop busting out the God card. God told me. No, God didn't tell you anything because the Bible says that you would know a man and a woman by their fruit. And if you had no fruit in your life, if there's nothing showing that you are in it with him, you're in tune with him, then it's going to be a little bit difficult to, to, to believe that you heard from heaven. 
And so what happens is the enemy comes and interrupts the frequency that God wants to have with you. And so Jesus says, hey, guys, I need you to take heed of what you hear. He says, with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. Now watch this. When you think about more will be given, what does that mean? Well, I've heard people say this, I don't hear from God anymore. And it's not that you don't hear from God. It's, it's, it's think this way. What was the last thing God spoke to you about? What was the last thing you heard God say and you haven't done it? And so when you haven't done what God has been telling you to do, then you no longer hear. You now have caused an interruption of your frequency of having an ear to hear and the ability to know the voice of God. And so he says, and it will be measured to you. And so the measure is how, how much obedience I, I apply to what I hear. And so he's saying, okay, every time I ask you to do something and you do it, I'm going to speak to you the next thing that I want you to do. So he says, I'll speak to you more. See, God will speak more to the person that obeys him on the last word. And God says, so you see, if you steward the word I gave you now, you're going to hear from me again. If you, don't, if you don't steward the word that I spoke to you. And some of us, we have words. I have words from years ago that I have still have to steward that have yet to happen. But I'm going to steward that word because the enemy is going to try to come and just snatch it out of me. But I can't let, when you're grounded in faith, you don't let the lies come in and dictate what choices you're going to make. Because there's too much truth in him. Are you hearing me? Okay, so uh, this is what Jesus is saying. He's saying, hey, listen, so then he said to them, take heed or, or steward what you hear with the same measure you use. It's going to be measured right back to you. And to you who hear, see, and to you who what? Hear. And to you who what? Hear. And to you who hear, more will be given. Anybody want to hear? Because not everybody's hearing. Not everyone's hearing. And, and that's okay because today maybe this will help you a little bit. So here's the question I have to ask you. So how do you steward what God said to you? How do you steward what God said to you? Let's look at another verse. Well, let, let's start with this. Um, what was the last verse I gave you guys? Good. Did I give you Luke yet? Okay, we're going to save that then. Okay, here... Here, here's, here's how you steward. Number one is before you write your point, you have to, you have to learn how God speaks. Okay, so how, do, how does God speak to us today? How does he speak? Because if you don't know how he speaks, and I have many people always ask me, Pastor, how do you know the voice of God? How do you know when God's speaking to you? How do you know when it's, when it's his voice or my voice or Satan's voice? Because how many know that the devil also has a voice? And he's always speaking. Trust me, he always speaks. And he speaks to Christians too. You know, and Christians like to entertain his conversations. I mean, look, just think Eve. Eve struck, struck a conversation with Satan and, and then he began to kind of confuse her a little bit, right? So the enemy will always bring in a thought. But look at this, 10 ways to hearing what God says. Number one, you can hear God speak through circumstances. What do I mean by that? Well, let's just take Jonah. God spoke to Jonah. Jonah heard the word of the Lord. The circumstance was God was saying, hey, Nineveh is, is, is about to be destroyed. They are so broken, busted, and disgusted with sin. And he says, I want them saved. So, Jonah, I want you to go and tell them that if they repent and turn from their wicked ways, I will save them all. You see, I believe that there was at least one righteous person in Nineveh that God was willing to save the entire city for. And you know what Jonah did? He ran the other way. And how many times has God asked us or we heard God say something and then we go the opposite way? Forgive. Nope. Love. Heck to the no for sure. Right? Serve. Help, reach, communicate. And what happens 
God is speaking and telling you over and over again, but we're like Jonah's. We go the, the opposite direction because we just don't want to deal with it. But how many know that regardless that God will still reach you wherever you're at in life, if you have not been hearing and doing, then you can start that today. And eventually Jonah went and he did so. God will speak through circumstances. Number two. He can speak through counsel. Proverbs is full of counsel, guys. The book of Proverbs. You want to get some wisdom? Okay. Book of Proverbs. As a matter of fact, in Proverbs, there's a verse in there that says, and the multitude of counselors, there's what? It's amazing how many people give counsel but from all the wrong people. Like you don't go talk to Uncle Drink a lot about your marriage. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just don't do that. Like, you don't go get counsel from someone who's already a little bit off scripturally. You just don't get counsel. That's not wise counsel. That's dumb counsel. You know what? So not everyone qualifies for counsel. You have to get around safe counsel. And don't be biased. Don't get around with people that are just going to tell you what you want to hear. Listen, godly counsel tells you what you need to hear. Not what you want. And so the counsel that we bring within our circle has to be people that actually are lined up with God's word and who will bring you a rhema word from heaven and say, this is how we're going to do this. This is how we're going to live. Amen. And so counsel number three. He also speaks through peace. Look at this, Colossians 3.15. And let the peace of God rule. Everybody say rule. That means that peace is in charge. Let the peace of God rule in your life. Philippians 4, 7 says, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through who? Christ Jesus. And so let me tell you something. I think it's something that I have used in my life for many, many big decisions. Two big decisions. Number one, when I first bought my house. Okay. We purchased our house when the economy was like booming before the big bubble bur burst. And, and everybody was bringing like big fat cash. And so after looking at 100 houses and having like 40 people that were in line, everybody having these bidding wars, I was, you know what, 0% zero, uh, uh, zero financing and all this other crazy stuff. It's like nobody wants to talk to you. But you know what, even though nothing was happening, faith kept me going. And so finally at house 101, I finally found the house. And you know what, I felt this peace. And I knelt down in that house and I said, God, Daddy, this is the house. And then right behind me on the same day, this dude comes with 50 grand cash. He says to the owner, down payment. But how many know that when you operate in the peace of God, when he rules, peace tells you it's yours. This is mine. And sure enough, the owner did not go with the person with the 50 grand. The owner went with me. God is good, right? What's another one? Before I started Elevate Church, I was offered to go into missions and to be a part of a big organization. All bills paid. You know, nice paycheck. Children would go to American schools in whatever country would be in. All wonderful things. But guess what? When I left the meeting, peace left me. Mind you, all these years I've been believing for missions. And now God said, eh. And then he brings me to start Elevate Church. And I never wanted a pastor. But all of a sudden I got all this peace inside of me. The very thing I didn't want to do, I have peace about. What in the hell? My like, God, what is up with you, man? What is, I thought you gave me the desires of my heart. Yeah, he said, yeah, when you're lined up with me. That's a whole nother sermon. It's a whole nother sermon, right? Okay, so number, what, what number am I on? Four. Okay, he also speaks through people. God can speak through people. This is pretty crazy, okay? Look at this. Acts 21, 10 through 11 says, and after we had been there a number of days, a prophet named Jacked up name, Agabus. Can you imagine if your name was Agabus? And Agabus comes, he's a prophet, and he came down from Judea, and then coming over to us, he took Paul's belt. This is pretty crazy. He took Paul's belt, and he tied his own hands and feet with it, and he said, the Holy Spirit says, in this way, this Jewish leaders of Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt, and will hand him over to the Gentiles. That's like me coming to you, taking your belt up. <laughs> Prophets are a little strange, huh? And then all of a sudden, the prophet himself, he, he binds his own arms and ar hands and, and he's like, Paul, I have a word for you. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, you shall be bound like I am. And the Jerusalem leaders are going to take you out and you shall be. And that's like kind of weird, but guess what? But God can speak in really strange ways and it may not make any natural sense. But if God needs to get to you, he'll do it in very unique ways. But when was the last time that we've expected God to speak to us in a unique way? 
right? What's another one? How about number five? Dreams. He speaks to people through dreams and visions. You think about Solomon, Jacob, Peter, John, Paul, Joseph. Listen, God speaks through dreams as well and visions. And I know that not everyone has the gift of interpret interpretation of visions and dreams, but let me tell you something. Uh, there are people who know how to interpret. There's a guy here in the church named Steve DeLaRosa. I've seen him develop in his faith. And you know what? He's, he's been given the gift of interpreting dreams. And it's pretty awesome. You know what's cool about all the way God speaks is that God uses all kinds of methods to reach all kinds of people. You know, like when you think about people that are into the new age, man, you just tell them, hey, guess what? <laughs> what? Yeah, God knows how to read stuff. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's this guy named Daniel. And man, there's this like this like this cow's finger or something weird that was writing on walls, and Daniel came and interpreted for the king. Really, he did. You know, it's so supernatural that people want to know the God with the unknown name. You just give him the name. His name is Jesus, and he's the greatest interpreter of dreams and visions. Let's look at another one. Through thoughts, come on, let's think. Matthew one twenty says, "But while he thought, ever say thought." About these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. You know, there's something about meditating on God's word. There's something about pondering. When you take a verse, a Bible verse, and you just start dissecting it, meditating on it, thinking on it. Let me tell you something. The Bible says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And so check this out. And the word became flesh. So think this way. If faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, the word that you constantly meditate on actually goes from just being written words to the manifestation of something that you've been believing for. That's what God does. While he thought, while he was probably pondering, maybe a word from heaven, the angel appeared. I'll never forget when I was in the hospital sick, my little boy Isaac at that point, he was probably five or six years old. He looked in the corner and he kept pointing over there. I'm like, what are you, what, what's going on? He says, there's an angel right there. I'm like, where? He's like, he's right there. And all throughout the time, Isaac would just point at the angel, look at the angel, look around. I'm just like, what in the world? But guess what? You know what? When you're in thought mode, God shows up in supernatural ways. Number seven, he also speaks through natural manifestations. John 12, 29 says, therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. And others said, an angel has spoken to him. Man, some natural manifestations. God can do some amazing stuff. Okay, just don't be looking for the tortilla Guadalupe on a tree, okay. <laughs> Number eight, supernatural manifestation. Okay, we know that there's supernatural manifestation. When we think about Moses, okay. Here's, here's Moses. Moses is 80 years old. He's walking through the desert. He's lost. He's disoriented. He, he just feels like my life is over. And then God shows up at a burning bush. And the burning bush is lit with fire. And there's a voice that's coming out of it. It was the voice of God. And all of a sudden, he's hearing this. And he says, and he's looking at the bush, this burning bush, but it was not consumed. I mean, that is awesome. And then, of course, we know that God has also spoke to Balaam through a donkey. Huh? The donkey, number nine. God also speaks through the Bible. And you know what? You can always, always rest your assurance on the word of God. The word of God will never fool you. The word of God will always keep you in perfect alignment with him. The moment you remove the word, you're in trouble. Okay? He says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then number 10, number 10, he also speaks through the still, small that's what I love about God is that, you know what, he uses different methods to speak to his kids. He knows what you need and when you need it and how he's going to say it so that you can hear him. And so we know the verse that says, and after the earthquake and fire and all these crazy things, you remember the story of Elijah. Elijah's in depression. He's running for his life. He's in a cave. He's depressed. He's sad. He's, he feels like, man, it's over. And then God shows up with, with, with fire. God shows up with earthquakes. God shows up with all kinds of crazy winds and everything. But then it wasn't the fire. It wasn't the earthquake. It wasn't the winds. It says, but it was that small, still voice where he said to Elijah, Elijah. What are you doing here? You see, God's voice doesn't have to be so deep and so far out there that you don't even understand it. God can just simply tell you, you know what? I love you. Who told you I didn't love you? I care about you. A 
a small, still voice. That's the way our God works because there's many voices, guys. There's many voices, but we have to learn how to, how to uh, get our ear acquainted with the voice of God. The Bible says this, and the voice of a stranger I won't listen to. But how many of us keep listening to the wrong voices? Strange people. Huh? Here's another thing to see. The Bible calls Satan the prince of the air. So check this out. If Satan is the prince of the air, that means that, man, there's voices in the air. That's like the airwaves. Uh, how many like listening to their car radios? Does anybody even do that anymore? I still do. But when I'm in my car, I get bored quickly, so I'm like always pushing every button. And you know what? I always hit seek. I don't know if you guys hit seek on your radio. And, and you know when you hit seek, it's like going, and it's going through all the stations like, like, like super fast, right? And as it's going through super things, you're just hearing, you're hearing like a, a mesh of, of music and voices and, and communication. You're hearing all this crazy stuff. But isn't it amazing how our ears have been trained to hear what we're accustomed to hear? The moment you hear your jam, it's like, boop, stop. And you start just jamming it, right? Like, boom. Like, how did you do that? How were you able to find your jam while you're going through the seek mode? Here's how. Because because you've trained your ear to hear what you're interested in. You find, once you find your frequency, bam, you lock in and now I can hear my song clearly, man. I could even sing the words and everything and it's all awesome. But here, here's how it works. That's how God, God gave us an antenna. God gave us the Holy Spirit who helps us catch the right frequency so that we can learn how to hear the voice of the Father and not just a bunch of voices. We need to be in tune. You need to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. If you're not in tune with the Holy Spirit, I promise you, you're making a lot of bad choices. You are. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can keep us in perfect alignment with him. Well, let's just take this, for example. Look, you have this perfect environment, the garden. God created the earth and we know it was without form and, and he spoke life and, and, and he spoke vegetation. All, he creates this perfect environment. But even within the most perfect environment, be careful. Because in your most perfect environment, there's still other voices. And there was two voices in that garden. You know whose voices were in there? God and Satan. Right? And so every day they're hearing the voice of God. And then all of a sudden you have Eve who's hanging out by the trees and, and Satan shows up. And you know what happens? He starts having a conversation with Eve. Huh? They start having some dialogue. How many of us have ever been in that place where your thoughts, come on, all of a sudden the enemy starts planting a seed. Everything is in seed form. Everything. Thoughts are seeds. Faith are seeds. Everything is a seed form. You start, you start allowing a seed that's been in your mind and all of a sudden you start feeding on that seed. Eventually, you know what happens? You start cultivating that seed and you start nurturing that seed, whether good or bad. And all of a sudden this seed now is something that you have so much nurtured that now it's becoming a truth, though it may be a lie. Okay? And so here you have Eve. And then if you look at Genesis, guys, if you guys could put Genesis, it says, Now the serpent, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And look, and he said to the woman, Has God indeed said? <laughs> so what's he, what's he confronting? What she heard. <laughs> and how many times do we get confronted with lies that don't line up with what we heard? God said, this is what I want you to do. And then we, different direction. And so he begins to contradict what God said. And he says, uh, <laughs> and he said to the woman, has God indeed said that you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So look, his little craftiness. And the woman said, hey, to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, okay, nor shall you touch it, lest you what? Die. And so all of a sudden here you have, you know what, Eve who's having this dialogue, this conversation. It's going back and forth, back and forth. And he's questioning what God said to her. And then he says, and then the serpent said to the woman, you're not surely going to die. Come on, you know, come, how can God give you life and then take it from you? 
Why would God create all these wonderful trees for you and then tell you, but of that tree you can't eat of? Maybe what he meant was don't eat too many mangoes off the tree. Like save some for the other animals, right? Like, you know what, sharing is caring, right? So like, you know, just don't eat too much because you may have a tummy ache. And so what happens is the enemy comes and he begins to contradict the truth and we start compromising that. And, he, and then he comes in. And then you know what happens? So we know the story. So Eve took and she disobeyed what she heard. And then the man came. And then he did the same thing. He followed the same thing. And then they both, they both went the wrong direction. And you know what the Bible says? It says, and then on that day after God then came, the right voice came and confronted them. The Bible said, and they heard from him no more. from him no more and sometimes we ask ourselves why don't I hear because he disobeyed the last thing but aren't you glad that the second Adam didn't get fooled by the devil <laughs> second Adam is Jesus he was also tempted to eat but Jesus overcame with the word and he said it is written <laughs> for man shall not uh, live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of my God and what I heard my father say, no one will take from me. So get the hell out of here, Satan. And Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave for us so that now you and I have the grace to turn it around and get right again with God. Can we give Jesus a big hand clap for that, right? Stand to your feet, please. I want you to put your hands over your ears. And I want you to make this faith declaration because you know what? We all need to do this. Put your hands down for a second because I know we'll probably get tired if I keep talking. We've all been deceived at some point. All of us. There's not one person here that has not been lied to. Whether it was through a person lied to or lied about there's not one person that hasn't been deceived by the enemy with lies not one however we can grow and mature and develop ears to hear the voice of the father and if we start using the methods that God has provided to hear his voice then less and less will we find ourselves in that place of deception. You got to watch who you hear. Jesus out of his own mouth, he said, take heed what you hear. I didn't read this, but in Luke 18, if you guys can put this up, look what, look what else Jesus says. Luke 18, guys. Therefore, take heed. What's that word? The first one was what? Mark 4 said what? Take heed how you what? Take heed what you hear. Here two chapters later, one chapter later, Jesus says now, take heed how you hear. You know why? Because the enemy is the greatest misinterpreter. For example, ladies, let's just use you for a second. Let's say the husband comes home, he's tired, he's exhausted, and he says, Hey, honey, is the dinner ready? And she's in the kitchen, but all she heard is, woman, is my grub done? And then she goes, no, you didn't. No, I know you didn't just say. And he's like, what? What did I say? Or vice versa, it could have been the guy, the girl, whatever. But, but isn't that interesting how, how words can be so misinterpreted that the enemy knows how to divide? And so here Jesus says, hey, listen, take heed how you hear. And many of us have not taken stewardship of how we hear. We only want to hear what we thought we heard instead of hearing what he really said. And he says, for whoever has, to him more will be given. And whoever does not have, this is scary. Whoever does not have, when you don't have the how, to steward, he says, it will be taken away from you. What does that mean? It means that you become numb to any conviction. 
you become numb to the voice of God because you've trained your ear to hear the voice of the enemy. And now you're quick to obey the enemy than you are quick to obey God. Take heed what you hear. Take heed how you hear. Because faith will interpret the truth. Without faith, you can't please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is God. How do we believe that he is God? Faith. Let's put our hands over our ears now. And I want you to say this. And say it in faith. Because we've all been there before. There's no condemnation. And just say, Jesus, please forgive me for lending an ear to lies to the enemy Jesus you not only saved my life but you have saved my spiritual ears ears to hear your voice only and the voice of a stranger I will not listen to I cast down every vain imagination every thought that is trying to exalt itself against the knowledge and the truth of my God. Jesus, I thank you that you would help me to train my ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. I choose life. I choose peace. I choose truth. Today, I will steward what I hear and how I hear it in Jesus name in that same attitude if you're here today and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus you came to the perfect hour it's the perfect time it's the perfect place for someone like you and me if you've never invited Jesus to be your Lord and Savior come on he he was willing to die on a cross because he believed so much in you. Even when we wanted nothing to do with him, his grace pursued us, his love pursued us. And he said, I'm willing to, to take my life and give it to you so that you can be free. The truth is this, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Today, you have an opportunity to receive Jesus, the one who gives you a way to life. He forgives you of all your sins, your past, present, and future. He is here. He loves you. When I count to three, your hand will go up. And you know what? You're not the first one to lift their hands today. There's been other people that have said yes to Jesus today. The question is this, is will you respond to him by faith? You have a little bit of seed in you right now. What you heard today has already built your faith up already to receive him. Come on. The reason we receive Christ in our life is because he becomes our savior. He's the only one that can give us eternity in heaven with the Father. We all have an expiration date and without him, we can't make it in. Earth is short, but heaven is long. Let's not, let's not be wasteful. Let's choose Jesus today. So when I count to three, just lift your hand up high so I can see it. And then we're gonna pray together. One, you're not afraid. Two, safe place. Are you ready? Three, if that's you, lift your hand high so I can see it quickly. And you respond, I see that hand. Anybody else? I see that hand. Anyone else? You're saying, yes, I'm inviting Christ in my life. Anyone else? I see those hands. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Let's, let's put our hands down. Let's pray together. Pray this. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Every one of them. Today, I receive a new life in Christ. Thank you, Lord for not giving up on me and for loving me the way you did today. Thank you. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.